So it's clear that manufacturers have a preference for smaller printers, and I totally understand that because they cost less to manufacture as well as ship, and there's a broader customer range. And there's a broader customer range. But there is a slice of the community that has also made it clear that they want a large format option that reigns supreme over its competitors. We have pleaded for Bamboo to release a larger format option and they just gave us the cold shoulder. And in fact, Corality even shrunk the size of their CR10 lineup. And all of this really just begs the question of why? So given the blistering success that I personally had with the Artillery X3 Pro, I was hopeful that success was going to translate over to the X4 Plus. And the X4 Plus is the newest in Artillery's lineup and it is of course their large format option. So that Plus variant is going to translate to a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume and given that the Comgro T500 exists at 500 millimeters cubed, this isn't the largest bed slinger on the market, but I would venture to say that most users have no reason to print anything larger than this. So, does the X4 Plus wear the crown, or does it make me frown? Yeah, yeah that, that one, one probably, probably should have been, been filtered, filtered out, out in the editing, editing stage, stage, but... but... So before we get into that, I need to run down some of the few specs that I know that you actually care about. And of course, I need to talk about PCBWay, which I care about. And one of the great reasons that I love PCBWay is because they specialize in professional 3D printing. Now, the great thing about PCBWay is they don't only print standard materials. You can also print peak, ASA, or even stainless steel and titanium. And in order to provide the highest quality service prior to printing, PCBWay is actually going to do a full model analysis of the file you upload. That will ensure when your print arrives, it's going to be exactly as you envisioned it. What are you waiting for? If you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. And thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring sponsoring today's video. Now back to the Artillery X4 Plus. So as I already mentioned, we're working with a whopping 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume and that massive bed is going to operate on an 11 by 11 bed mesh. The X4 Plus runs a single linear rail on X, it has dual linear rails on Y, and it has a timing belt synchronized dual motor Z. Artillery claims that this machine can reach a crazy 500 millimeters per second while printing, but we're going to touch on that a little bit later. We have a 300 degrees Celsius all metal hot end and it is fed by an all metal dual gear extruder. I went to confirm those two specs and while disassembly I encountered four of the seven screws that were highly, highly stripped and they prevented me from doing any further disassembly. With that, I wasn't able to actually get into the extruder to see how it was operating. What I do know though is that artillery doesn't want anyone to be tinkering with this tool head and that's because the design is so obfuscated I cannot fathom any reason why the engineers would make the design choices that they did. For instance, to remove the hot end and install a new one requires 100% disassembly of every other component in this hot end. And that's because you have to do that in order to access a rear facing screw that attaches the hot end to the heatsink. And while we're talking about the heatsink, this sucker is a ridiculous 44 by 26 millimeters. This is the largest heatsink I have ever seen on a hot end. Sadly, there is no onboard accelerometer, but it actually doesn't seem to matter. And lastly, the X4 Plus is gonna give you a fully unlocked clipper experience. So if I'm being honest, my initial impressions with the X4 Plus were a little underwhelming because the build process was fairly slow and confusing. That was immediately followed by a terrible manual bed leveling experience utilizing the six undermounted bed springs and screws. 
Let's just say this whole process was just as bad, if not worse, than the bed leveling process back in 2019. And as shown by the exorbitant corner variance, getting a 300 by 300 bed leveled with screws is nearly impossible. Eventually though, I just gave up and began printing. After navigating a sea of UI translation errors and a ton of odd menu navigation choices, I was greeted by three failed benchies. I chose to contact artillery and they immediately told me to lower the infill overlap percentage, which was defaulted to 75%. And this immediately cleared up the benchy issue for me. Though now that we're talking about the pre-supplied printing profiles, let's pedal back on that 500 millimeter per second printing claim. If I'm being honest, I didn't expect 500 millimeters per second printing, but the supplied profiles didn't even have travel moves at that speed. Now I can see with my own two eyes the construction of this printer so I know that it can sustain at least 250 or 300 millimeters per second printing but it didn't even have that as an option. If you don't ship the printer with the correct profiles, very few people are ever gonna be able to take advantage of the machine's capabilities. So with all of that in mind, I actually did begin to enjoy printing with this machine. And I admit, I don't have anything mind-bogglingly amazing or new to report about the X4 Plus, but simply having a large format printer that runs Clipper and has absolutely outstanding print results is enough to impress me. The Benjis that I printed look absolutely perfect, and besides the broken foot, this Flexi Factory Dapper Skeleton is flawless. And also, this super complex Rose Teddy Bear is just ridiculous. It is definitely worth noting that along with the infill overlap percentage, I do think the supplied profiles could do for some support calibration. What is nice though is that artillery provides us with profiles for the seven most commonly used materials, so your desired material is likely not left out. Though good luck finding an enclosure large enough to fit this machine in order to successfully print ABS. Okay, okay, I know I don't have very many overwhelmingly positive things to say about this machine, but <laughs> hear me out. Pretty much every negative thing that I mentioned is manageable. So there is no onboard accelerometer, but the frequencies that this machine produces was measured at the factory and those frequencies were pre-applied to the resonance compensation algorithm. I tested them with this zombie kitten's card sleeve and there is absolutely no ghosting that can be seen on this print. I know I mentioned a couple issues with the supplied printing profiles, but I already gave you the fix for the supplied infill overlap percentage and getting this machine to print faster really shouldn't be a difficult task. Also, Clipper wasn't even designed to be used on a tiny onboard screen anyway. It was designed to be used in a full-fledged web interface. So all of those translation errors that I mentioned, they didn't really affect me anyway. In fact, I might actually remove this screen in order to reduce the footprint of this printer. Look, I definitely think that artillery can and even should fix all of these issues in the X5 lineup, or maybe even an over-the-air update for the X4+. Plus. However, this is what Artillery released in 2022, so I definitely think that they are floating their sinking business model. And despite the issues that I mentioned, I absolutely think that the X4 Plus has a worthy place in the market. I genuinely think that the X4 Plus is going to be a good purchase if you're in the market for a large format printer. And that is because the K1 Max and the Comgro T500 are the only comparable options on the market right now, yet the K1 Max is $470 more expensive and the T500 is $570 more expensive. For those price differences, you could literally purchase two of these machines and have two of these machines running to do double the output. Anyway guys, I have a link in the description if you want to check out this printer and learn more about it. I know I have been critical about this machine, but if you're in the market for a large format clipper based machine, I promise you will like this printer. And thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. Please make sure you like and subscribe and then check out these videos or these videos or wherever those videos are. And I will see you guys in the next video.